Hegel's philosophy in 10 minutes. What does dialectic mean? What is absolute spirit? And who are the masters and slaves? Hegel's philosophy is one of the most complex and complicated theories. His ideas are viewed as the peak of German idealism. He built an all-encompassing system that tackles and explains every aspect of reality. Hegel's philosophy influenced the whole 19th century. Some readers, including Karl Marx, perused his text. Others, for instance, Arthur Schopenhauer, denied Hegel's heritage completely. Be that as it may, Hegel's ideas are relevant for 21st century philosophy and continue to hold sway over modern thought. Up until today, there exists a Hegelian movement that preaches and adheres to his approach. In this video, we'll dissect the major aspects of Hegel's philosophical system and define the main directions of his thought. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video if you want to see more content like this. We'd love to share our insights with you. Philosophy of History it's foolhardy to grasp Hegel's ideas, that's why we'll start with the discussion of his most concrete and clear theory, the philosophy of history. The cornerstone of his approach is the notion of becoming. Hegel addresses the history of the entire world and its development, and this is the first aspect that makes Hegel's ideas stand out from the foregoing conceptions of the world as the absolute and timeless form. How can we comprehend history from a philosophical angle? Hegel believed that history has a certain purpose we must recognize. He determined its purpose as the progress of the realization of freedom. Hegel started his analysis with the history of Oriental countries and came to the conclusion that the privilege of freedom was given only to the rulers. In Hegel's opinion, the Eastern society remained at the first stage of the development of freedom because no one, except for the sovereign, was allowed to have or express a free will. Hegel held that the first seed of true freedom was sown in antiquity. The concept of individual freedom was the child of ancient Greece, which couldn't grow up so long as the social structure allowed and rested upon slavery. It was Socrates who sabotaged this principle of Greek world. He taught the youth to make decisions independently, and this was a stepping stone towards free thinking. Hegel thought this to be the beginning of the end for the world of ancient Greece. In ancient Rome, personal freedom became legally reinforced. Even so, the revolution of individual freedom was brought about by Christianity, and to Hegel, the key principle of Christian tradition was the understanding of a human as a unity of body and mind. What's more, he held the spiritual aspect of an individual to be his or her highest faculty, and this was the major Christian achievement, raised awareness of freedom which liberated the human from the importance of the material world. The logic of Hegelian philosophy is the withdrawal from the material and sensory to the spiritual and abstract. And that's why Christian concepts were so important to Hegel. And the next stage on the way to the awareness of freedom was the Reformation branded by Hegel as the All Enlightened Son. Now a person could identify the true spirit without the mediator in the face of the church. And this was the pivotal point of genuine freedom revelation which had to be instilled into the collective mentality of society. The final significant event in the world history, according to Hegel, was the advent of the Enlightenment and its culmination in the form of the Great French Revolution. When his analysis of the entire historical evolution came to his contemporaneity, Hegel insisted that the goal of the historical process was the recognition of freedom. Hegel declared that the point in time he happened to live at gave an individual the highest degree of freedom, both social and spiritual. But in order to achieve absolute freedom, society should adopt his, Hegel's, philosophical system. To sum up, Hegel proved the tenacity of his philosophy by validating the need for freedom by the logic of historical processes. Now let's see what his philosophy is all about. Thought. The development of history that we've just discussed is based on logic. In all things of his philosophical examination, Hegel ruled out any chance of random or accidental occurrences. He was sure that each event was logic-driven. In keeping with this line of thinking, Hegel's philosophy was a natural link in a chain of events. Since history is made by people, let's move to the philosophical ideas about them. This is Hegel's view of human consciousness. Initially, we perceive the world directly via our senses. This scheme doesn't let us acquire new knowledge as we simply experience sensations. The five receptors supply us with sensory information, and to translate this sensory input into words, we involve our mind. This operator converts perception into a concept, which by the way doesn't stand for a concrete thing, but represents a whole category. Hegel inferred from this that knowledge comes only through the concepts whereby he discarded the sensory contribution. The one-sided standpoint was the reasons their entire Hegelian system was penned by critics. The kernel of Hegel's philosophy is the cognitive power of human mind aimed at itself and other objects. But other objects are the product of our mind, and Hegel agrees with Kant by saying that the phenomenal world in its entirety is the result of our consciousness and therefore the only reality available to us. 
To learn more about the philosophy of Kant and its influence on Hegel in our video course, The Entire History of Philosophy, we discuss great thinkers of the past and their ideas, and you can find the link to the course in the description box. Hegel thought that self-consciousness is only possible through the existence and activity of another consciousness, something that seems external. Self-consciousness is not a self-sufficient process, self-understanding can't happen in isolation. A person can acquire knowledge about themselves only through the other medium. In line with Hegel's train of thought, the relationship between self-consciousness and the other external object is based on the desire to possess this object. And in the process of fulfilling this desire, the object, which was initially beyond our consciousness, becomes this part. The thesis brings us to one of the keystones of Hegel's philosophy, the master-slave dialectic. Master-slave dialectic. Hegel divided self-consciousness into the consciousness of the slave and the consciousness of the master, which are interdependent. They're bound by the mutual desire for recognition. But what is recognition? According to Hegel, it means to become an object of desire for the other and thus achieve self-consciousness. As I've already said, self-consciousness depends on the other consciousness, which is bound to become the object of desire. And here comes the crux. The master can never achieve the desired freedom, for they see the slave as a thing. And what the master seeks is recognition via a free and self-conscious mind. Neither does the slave attain recognition, but unlike the master, the slave can affect the physical world. While the master simply satisfies the needs, the slave fulfills ideas by producing material objects. By dint of this process, the slave comes closer to self-consciousness since he or she sees the result of their doings. The problem boils down to the fact that the master consumes the products provided by the slave who is thus deprived of complete self-consciousness. Hence, there is a vicious circle of never-ending dependency between the slave and the master. Absolute Spirit In a nutshell, the path of self-understanding starts with consciousness goes through recognition by the other and evolves into self-consciousness. And we've applied this model to the realm of humans, but the beauty of Hegel's inception is that he extended its relevance to each and every facet of reality he called the Absolute Spirit. What is Absolute Spirit? In a word, everything, in a few words, the physical and spiritual world in their self-consciousness. The life of spirit is an endless activity of self-knowing. For Hegel, the reality is neither matter nor substance, but subject, thought, or spirit. This is why in textbooks, Hegel's philosophy is referred to as objective idealism. That is the comprehension of the entire objective reality as the activity of spirit, and as the activity brings about the diversity of the ever-changing forms of the world. Hegel distinguished three successive stages in the development of spirit. Firstly, spirit becomes aware of its own existence. Secondly, it recognizes the existence of another reality in itself, and this reality is nature, or objective matter, which belongs to spirit since it appeared in spirit. Thirdly, spirit admits and transcends the otherness within itself, thus reaching the ultimate state of self-consciousness in and for itself. What is reasonable is real, that which is real is reasonable. By this Hegel pronounces that everything is thought which creates itself, creates objective matter beyond itself, and through recognition of this matter returns to itself completely self-aware. In Hegel's view, spirit cognizes reality which is in fact inherent in spirit. Following this threat, we may conclude that the absolute knowledge is attainable when spirit realizes that the knowledge it looks for is spirit itself. To facilitate this long and confusing process, Hegel's kindly offered his own philosophy as the final step towards self-recognition, self-knowledge, and self-consciousness. If you feel the theory gets too complicated, believe me, you're not alone. Even academics and philosophers grapple with his texts. There's no objective reality without thinking. Accordingly, Thought and reality are the same thing, and if logic deals with the loss of thought, then it should study the loss of the universe too. This is why, from Hegel's perspective, logic is the pinnacle of philosophical knowledge. And we have two minutes to go, so let's skim through Hegel's dialectic. Dialectical method. To make it easier for me to explain, the example of European history would come in handy. Classical Athens was based on democracy and well-established mythological tradition. This is thesis. Then came Socrates with his method of critical thinking and undermined the foundation of tradition and knowledge, and this is antithesis. In Germany of Hegel's days, the movement of freedom came to the point when the thesis and antithesis met and formed synthesis, and Hegel saw it as a harmonious coexistence of free minds. Let's put it in a different way. Consciousness is a thesis. In order to become aware of itself, it needs an external object, which is antithesis. And when the two confront each other, they instigate the process of self-discovery which is synthesis. The dialectical method found is a breeding ground in philosophy. Hegel lays out several ways of approaching and understanding absolute spirit, and it can be art, religion, or philosophy. In Hegel's opinion, 
philosophy is the highest form of the three because it deals with pure concepts, unlike art with its material objects, or religion with its material objects. When all is said and done, Hegel's philosophy examines the path of self-knowing, from the bottom, that is sensory perception of the world, to the top, which is absolute knowledge. And to accomplish this progressive meditation, one cannot do without Hegel. And the entire 19th century Europe was greatly affected by Hegel. His thoughts spread to philosophy, science, and art. There were avid fans and passionate haters of his vision, but at the end of the day, both read his works. Learn more about Hegel's philosophy and its interpretation by Marx and Schopenhauer in our course, The Entire History of Philosophy. See the link in the description for details, and if you enjoyed this analysis and don't mind seeing more content on philosophy, like and share this video. Thanks for watching.